All right. Hey, everybody. It's 9.15 a.m. on 8-1. Oh, it's it's August. It's August. Uh, I have I've been putting some polls out on my philosophy Twitter asking what would be the most useful videos for everybody. And I wanted to know if it was going to be crypto, if it was going to be investing, basis of blockchain. It, people want to know about the Amazon selling account so far. So I think that the Amazon selling account and the Amazon review business that I'm going to start will be the two major things. And I actually don't even need these headsets right now. Since it's just, just me and you here. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through a day of my Amazon store and really just let everybody see behind uh, the workings here. Because I guess people are having difficulty. I mean, obviously, obviously. <laughs> no, people are having difficulty trying to figure out how to make an income. And if you're not in a trade where you're working with your hands, you know, HVAC, electronics, plumbing, electrical, whatever it may be, and you're in an office, things are starting to switch online and globally. Um, and I think the rest of the world kind of figured this out already. So the United States is behind because people in other countries were working remotely for America. So you didn't need to work remotely. You were here. I don't want to say the, the, the vid word. I don't want to get into the vid. But one of the huge things that globally the people that were involved with that did is they switched stuff online because – then they could really see globally which online workers they could convert. So if you're an individual right now that's trying to work within your geographical area, you are taking a big hit because a lot of the world had already gone global because if you're in a third world and you can't physically move or you physically can't migrate somewhere where there's work, you can hop on your computer every morning and digitally move within the metaverse over to a place where there's resources so you can live geographically in one area and work remotely. I know that sounds like, yeah, obviously, Dave, but when you verbalize it like that, you can start thinking thinking that stuff. So one of the things that I have here is an online business, and some of this stuff is done. I'm currently in my manual labor course because I'm going to be doing some packing today. Uh, I did about 12, 13 hours of driving yesterday going around taking, finding this rare product and packing it in a truck from these different department stores. And I'm going to pack that up and ship it into Amazon. But a majority of the stuff that I buy is via wholesaling. I, this is not a wholesaling video. This is a video about like some everyday stuff I do to keep my account maintenance going. Um, but we can, we can get into the other stuff. So first of all, my main channel is Dave Wright the Thinker. It's a philosophy channel. So if you wanted to support me here, this is my Dave Wright the Capitalist. This was my original channel when I was teaching, uh, 1099, like a switch from the mindset of a W2, which is a nine to five employee to a 1099, which is like an independent contractor working for a larger employee doing freelance work over to try to get you into an LLC mindset. Um, and then I also have Dave Wright, the thinker, which is my website. And this has kind of got some, uh, this has got a lot of stuff here, a lot of different categories set up. So if you're interested in philosophy and self repair, or just trying to explore the world from different viewpoint, you can go here into the search engine type something, blah, blah, blah. And it's all categorized for you. I also have a YouTube channel. I host all this stuff on BitChute. But anyways, uh, if I mention anything here, like we're going to be talking a little bit about Be Cool today. I don't have a Be Cool thing, but I do have a Sellaboard discount code. So if you need, if you in the future want to help me out and you're looking to sell a board, please use my code. It'll help you and me. And when you get into scanning wholesale uh, spreadsheets, this analyzer tool is going to be very helpful. I'm working mentally a little bit here. My camera keeps shutting off. I have all the time delays disabled. So we'll see if that occurs today. Um, if it does, I'll just turn it back on. I shouldn't lose any 
audio. But anyways, okay. So let's get started. And this is going to take me much longer uh, speaking through it than it normally would. I would just normally log on in the morning. And this is my Amazon Seller Central account. So I'm not going to make a video about how to set up an account. But what I will say is if you're interested in doing it, you can sign up for an Amazon Seller account for free as a personal account. You can start looking for products either locally that sell for more online or stuff that's online at a wholesale rate. Have it shipped to Amazon and have them do the shipping for you. Um, and they'll charge you $0.99 cents per transaction. And the monthly service fee is $39.99, so it's 40 bucks. So once you can start selling 40 items a month, you'll switch that over to a pro account. But in the meantime, you'll get... Uh, a free scanning app, free access to the Seller Central, and you can start trying to find deals. You can start joining discard groups and Facebook groups, even just going to yard sales. You can sell used items on Amazon um, and open items, and I don't think people realize that. They think it's just new and can glamour. And all the stuff that's on a site, all the stuff that's on Amazon for sale, and let me go in here, right here. Like When, when you go in to something like this, right? And you type in uh, do, 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 shampoo, right? And I click on this Dove. Let me find one of some multiple sellers here. All this stuff. And this is free software, most of this. Or this Jungle Scout, but you can get some add-ons. Um, anybody can use this. You don't need... You don't need to be a seller to get access to this, but... Uh, let's see. Yeah. So see this one here, this is dove and most people would just go on and say, buy, right. One time purchase, but actually, and this is being shipped from Amazon. You can see here, right. Sold by Amazon ship. But if you go down here to other sellers, this is actually being sold by for Amazon for 1992 for 1975 NAP direct. $29.99 Supreme Sales, $29.99, $24.99, $24. So the reason these aren't showing up on the main screen is A, Amazon took control of that, but B, they have the best price and delivery. Um, but this is something to know. So for instance, if I click on this NAP Direct, this particular seller has a 93 positive rating if you don't want to buy directly from Amazon. And then you can even see here that they're in Maryland. So this um, somebody like this, if you wanted to support somebody locally in your town, you could even look for sellers in Maryland, or you could look for sellers, for instance, uh, if you didn't want to buy from California, you look for sellers in Texas. If you didn't want to buy from people in Texas, you could look for like whatever. So you can actually kind of shop with your virtues a little bit if you wanted to uh, generalize about the types of people that live in particular states. But anyways, back to... The thing on hand. So when I log into my site, I should have got some. I should have got some water. I'll be right back. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. Thanks for not leaving. It's pretty much a live stream, except you don't get to interact with me because I ain't editing in this, baby. Perfect. All right. So I log into my... All right. So I log into my account in the morning. And there's a couple things that I want to do for maintenance. And this is... What I would just basically do when I log in, I'm going to come over here to my total balance, and this is going to open up <clears throat> what Amazon owes me right now. <coughs> Sorry. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. This is what Amazon owes me. So... When a sale goes through, let me go Let me go full screen for you. So when a sale goes through for Amazon, if you buy from Amazon, you know 
products have either a 30 or a 45 day return. Uh, some of them don't, groceries and medical supplies and stuff like that. But for the most part, products have a 30 to 45 day return. So that means if you're a seller, there's a limbo there. You could you buy a product, you send that product in. It's got to go through a couple weeks of processing, get on the shelf. Somebody's got to order it. Amazon's got to pick it. They got to deliver it. The person's got to get it. The person's got to open it. Now your clock starts. They have 30 days to return it from that day that they receive it, or sometimes 45 days, depending if it's the holiday season or if the special deal. Like I said, if it's not a grocery or a medical, like, you know, they can't be trying a toothbrush for 30 days and returning it. So that means your payments are on a, a recurring thing as well. So if I buy a product today, I need to get it on the uh, I need to get it packed, I need to get shipped, I need to get it into Amazon, I need to get picked, I need to get sold, and when it gets sold, the clock starts. So money that you see here, money, money that you see here on this page is rolling in from stuff that I worked on two months ago, 45 days ago, 30 days ago, 60 days ago. So you have to be able to at least set your mindset up instead of, you know, a lot of times you're like, okay, I worked eight hours today. That means on Friday I'll get whatever. And a lot of people get a W-2 mindset and they're working now for a paycheck next week. You know, they usually hold back one paycheck. Or if they work 15 days, they're like, okay, every two weeks. When you're running a business, you need to get yourself comfortable with sitting back, looking out, and realizing, okay, what's my plan here? Really all I'm doing is I have money that I invest in these products in my ability to find products for people. I'm really getting paid for, let me open this up full screen again. I'm really getting paid for the difficulty in acquiring these products and getting it to an individual. So if you find a super rare product, it's in high demand, and I put it online, the difference between what I paid for that product and what the seller will pay for the product for me is the difficulty in which it is to acquire that product and get it to them in a healthy state. And so you can do a couple things. You can find products that are very easy to find, that you that sell in high quantities, that give you a little bit of a profit. So you could find something that's a dollar that sells a thousand a month, but it's so easy to find, you only get a nickel per product. Or you can find a product that sells 30 a month, let's just say, that's very difficult to find, so people will pay a premium. So if you were to pay, say, uh, $25 for it, you might be able to sell it for 300 and you're getting a $200 uh, middleman fee. And people say, well, you're taking advantage of those people. It's like the market demand for that product is the amount of work and effort and skill set. It's not the, the hours that I put in. It's not that I'm driving around for 16 hours yesterday and then I'm going to make probably 15 grand off of, off, off of that trip. People are like, oh, that, you shouldn't be making that a day. But that's not what I did. I spent years cultivating ideas, understanding businesses, demand, supply, education, the economy, people's needs, advertising, in order to use those skills to figure out what the demand is. Because if more people start doing that and they had the skill set, then that product would be uh, easier to find, less demand, and it would then come de come down, uh, and the individuals just wouldn't pay it. it it's not a compulsory, compulsory item meeting. I'm not forcing anybody to pay those prices, and sometimes they don't sell a particular price, and it gets lower. Sometimes competition does move in, and we fight each other to come down to where the customers are benefiting from the two of us competing, but I'm a little off track. I told you. So for me, I'm doing this channel. I want you to get your, your mindset. The, what's on the screen here shouldn't be less important to you 
than the ideas and the techniques that you're learning. But anyway, so I come in here. I haven't been on here. What's today? Today is Thursday. I haven't been on here for a couple of days since, I think, Monday. So this is a couple of days of money piling up in here. I can either wait, and then every 15 days, they'll automatically deploy this to me, or I can just request these funds now. So I can request this money now. Request it. Now, this is getting sent to my bank account. So tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'll have $5,400 in change in my bank account to either pay uh, for supplies and stuff, pay down uh, any debt that I've acquired from the business, or to reinvest in new product to sent out there. So basically, when, I think, when, you, when I'm buying these products, my mindset is you have 12 months in a year, and if I plan my whole year out, and I had like a thousand dollars, let's say at the beginning of the year, I want to try and take that thousand dollars and spend it as many times as I can per year, per the year to make money off it. So if I spend a thousand dollars every two months and I'm expecting to get five hundred dollars back, I'm spending a thousand for two months to make fifteen. Then in those two months, I'm spending fifteen and trying to make, uh, you know. Uh, make the 500 back then i'm trying to make 750 from the 1500 and roll it over and i'm trying to do that six to eight times a year like i said so you're getting money you're getting paid for the difficulty of setting up the person with the product whatever that demand is like i said you could do high sales with ease or you could do difficult sales and charge a premium you're taking that money you're making that difference in capital. You're, you're deploying the capital. You're getting the profits from it. And the profits are whatever the market or the individuals pay for the difficulty values and the skills that you use to do that. Then you get that back and hopefully your capital made more capital for you. Then you take that extra and you deploy it again. But now you can deploy more and you keep doing more and more until you are deploying a large amount of capital that's bringing back a large amount of profit. And once you can do that to a point where it covers your living expenses, now you're, you're running your business <laughs> basically. So at first you, you know, a thousand to make 500 and you get that 500 back in two months, you can't live off 250 a month. So you keep doing that over and over again and to, until you're getting it to a point where you can live off the returns that the money that you're taking a risk on. And sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. So you could deploy $1,000 and get back seven fifty and lose two fifty. dollars um, And now you have to make two fifty to just break even. And now you're four months out uh, in the year with that $1,000 and you're just right where you started again. So it's not like... Uh, that's why many businesses fail. But anyways, okay. So after I've collected the money they owe me, I go over here and let's see if I have any account health issues. So I do have an account health issue. It says we have a, a policy violation here. So these are all clear. This looks like a pricing issue. It is. So Amazon will uh, look at your account and only allow you to have certain prices if they think the price is too high you'll get a pricing thing like this so let me go over here and look this up this particular item this is a software called be cool and this is how i adjust my pricing automatically it's it's ai and uh interesting okay so this is my current one this is my current stuff that's in amazon Let's look at delisted ones because if this was a pricing area, that means Amazon shut the listing down. So it might fall into this filter here. And bam, here we go. So I have this priced at $29.99 and $39.99. If I go over to my inventory here and I search for that as well, it's inactive and it's priced at fifty-seven twenty-six. So I need to edit this listing. So let it's let it's change that pricing to thirty-nine ninety-nine. 
And then once you, once I change that price here, I'm going to hit save all at the bottom. Now, the way that Amazon works when you're doing an update is they have multiple programs running on multiple servers throughout the entire globe. And they all cultivate on sites for the particular continent that you're on. So, for instance, this is Amazon.com, which is in the U.S. There's Amazon.uk, which is Amazon in the United Kingdom. There's Amazon.ca, which is in Canada. And you can log on to all those sites and buy and look at products from there and have them pay the extra shipping and get them shipped to you. Most people just buy in the United States, the Amazon dot com is the biggest but you can shop on all those other uh sites and get it delivered to the u.s if there's something that you can't find and actually some people do that um it's called arbitrage and you can look at other amazon sites to see if there's a super rare item in the united states buy it on amazon get it shipped here they resell it on amazon for a premium it's very difficult to do and you'd probably be better off talking to the wholesaler um, but the difference is if you buy from Amazon, the products will get here faster with a, a bigger guarantee, but you'll have less of a profit margin. But anyways, because you have all those com those computers working together, around every 15 minutes, depending on where you are in the process, the sites are scraping together all this data to put them all back together. So even though I changed this price here, to $39.99, it may take up to 15 minutes for that to get fixed. That's a basic upfront change. If I were to go in here and change something on the listing, if I had 100% control of that listing, which on this particular one I do not, but if I did, that would take up to 24 hours because the system is only scraping some of the larger stuff and changing it. Because if they constantly change, 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 then there would be issues. But also sometimes the stuff is, is manually looked at so you're not just changing stuff willy-nilly on the site and, and they lose track of it. But anyways, now if I go back to this performance on my account, let's see. It's still there, so that's going to take 15 minutes. We'll check back on this second Lastly, I go over to my feedback manager, and I'll teach you a trick right here. So I don't have any new feedback, but whenever you get, every day if you check this and you check your feedback, if you have anything less than a five, if you have a four, three, two, or one, you can just go over to here and request removal, and Amazon will scan its text documents Amazon will scan its text documents. It'll go through It'll go through the product. It'll go through that comment, and it'll check the two and say, hey, is this okay? Is this allowed? And most of the time, the AI will be like, well, this isn't about the individual account. This is about the product, or this is about the way Amazon handled it, or this is a personal complaint, or this is a pricing issue, whatever it, whatever it may be, and then it'll remove it from your account. This is this this is particular feedback towards me as an individual seller, not the product. So if, for instance, with this right here, um, somebody was upset with Amazon about a, a product that I sold to them, and they gave it a one, but it was based on Amazon's packaging and shipping. So Amazon immediately removed it. Same with this. Um, and, and if you click this open so here's a one from me but if i click this order open and i go to the game here this particular game was damaged and they didn't like it but if you look at the game itself they should have put that under this particular rating it should have been a game review about how the pieces don't unclick and stuff not about me i didn't manufacture the game so you can look at two things. You can look at the um, the individual products review and your individual view review. And what you want to do is you want to go in here as a seller and make sure you only have five ratings. I even take fours off of there because even a four will bring your rating down and it's hard to get back up. But that would be it. In a day-to-day, -day, for the most part, those are my main things. Now I can get a little deeper 
into it. I actually have a issue here that I tried to resolve that I can't. Um, So Amazon is quite the beast, and sometimes you can argue with them seven ways to Sunday, and you just can't get it, get anything done. So with this particular item, there's a problem. They say that I sent in a box. Oh, actually, they did find them. Okay, so now that they found them, they claim that I sent... It, it's impossible, but because it's in the computer this way, I'll never be able to fix it. So I just kind of have to say, okay. But I sent in two boxes of 42. They were um, cases. And Amazon received them, but when they put them in the computer, they put all but one of them under one shipping thing and one of them on a different. So they're claiming in this box size that I had 83 in one box and one box and one in the other. And like objectively it couldn't happen. You can look at the, the package size. It was 19 pounds. It was 16 by 19 by 24. And there's no way I could put 80 plus of them in one and one in the other. But I've tried to fight this seven different ways and it didn't work. So now I'm just going to go to resolve Typically, what you would do is you would send in the paperwork to them, um, go through, get it approved, and then show them the case that it would got approved of, and then they would remove it from this inbound shipping thing here. And why isn't this popping up? This is supposed to let me pop up and, and fix it here. What else? What else? Is it under here? Nope. Incorrect labels, no missing labels, no other label problems. Why isn't it letting me? So normally what you can do, it says action required. You would go in here to resolve. It would pop up and you would get, get something to dispute it. But it's not giving that to me today. So let's see if I can do it in the, in the case. Can I do it in here? No. Can I do it in here? No. Maybe because they, cause they fixed it. Can I do it in here? Yeah, see, it's showing that 83 were received in, in this. So I'm going to try one last time. I am going to open up a new case here. Let's open up a new case. Uh, should I get into this? No, I'm not going to get into this. This is actually, I was going to use ChatGPT to, to try one last time and say, look, there's no way that 83 units can fit in there and whatever. Do you think you guys made a mistake? But they're going to say no, and it's, it's going to turn this video into something that I don't want to change it into. So... Next, I'm going to go into, and actually let's check, since it's been a couple of minutes, let's check on the performance. So that performance remark has been removed. Remember, it was a red one there. So all the pricing is correct again. We're going to go to active listings. And this is be cool. This is how I do my pricing. This is my... Uh, Oh, it's a new month today. I've lost $8.34. I'm going to be in the poorhouse. So, all right. Now, I'm going to go through inventory. It's the first of the month, and I'm going to readjust my prices. So that's why I wanted to wait to do this, this video. So we're going on 30 minutes here. So maybe I should do a second video explaining how I do my monthly inventory for everybody. So... If you like this video, go to the other video and watch what I do at the beginning of the month. That was my daily kind of cleanup with a little bit of business, with a little bit of business philosophy in there. And now, see?
Why is the camera cut off? It's back, but I don't know why. Right at the end. So I'm going to have to fix that. And then I'm going to do a quick little video about what I do with my inventory. So, okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, please subscribe. Dave Wright, the capitalist. If you're into philosophy or some of the mindset stuff that I talk about, please head over to my other channel, Dave Wright, the thinker. And check out some of the philosophy stuff here. Uh, and then, if you like that, make sure that you go over to my website, DaveWrightTheThinker.com. This is where you can look up old topics. Put them right here in the search bar. You can either look by big categories and go through stuff, uh, or you can whatever. This is going to have a blog to read, or you can just look at the playlist on YouTube, BitChute, or Rumble. Uh, I host everything on BitChute. Uh, it's the true free free speech platform. I, I'm going to try and move everything over there eventually. But, okay, thanks for listening. And I got to figure out, hey, in the comments, real quick, if you made it this far, I have a Canon EOS R7. It's plugged in. The battery is plugged in. I get juice all the time. I'm running it into a 4K capture card that's uh, attached to my motherboard. It's in my computer. It's not the external ones. I have all the display settings set up so that they're disabled, so it doesn't turn it off. And yet, what's happening is I'm still getting, I'm still with the camera here, at around 30 minutes, it's it's shutting me off. And I, I, I bought this a camera specifically because it said at 30 minutes it wouldn't do that. And it does. And... Sometimes it doesn't. Like I live streamed the other day with Dalton Pruitt. And if you want to check that out, that's over on Dave Wright, the capitalist. We talked a little bit about, um, we talked a little bit about Bitcoin in, uh, it's over here, over here. We talked a little bit about, uh, Bitcoin and how to invest in that. And, we're going to do some more series on that. But anyways, my camera didn't go off this whole time, but it was all stretched out. Now that I've like fixed it so it's full screen, it goes off every 30 minutes. So if you know why, please, please help me how I can fix that and the thing because I, I can't figure it out. So anyways, I'm going to turn this off and then turn the camera back on. And I'm going to do a video about how I fix my inventory at the beginning of each month. So if you like that, look for that one. So. All right. Thank you for tuning in.